welcome to episode 139 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today's April 13th, and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. So low-code and SAP are top of mind in a lot of my discussions with customers and partners at the moment. One reason, actually, might be the Power Platform at SAP Roadshow that we just ran in Germany. We had stops in three cities, and in all locations, we had trouble fitting everyone in. All shows were overbooked. Each event was fantastic and featured some amazing scenarios from partners and customers. So today I'm really happy to have the two masterminds behind this roadshow with us, Malene and Mahesh. I'm really looking forward to talking to them about what it took to make this a success, their key takeaways, and obviously also the next steps um, on Power Platform and SAP. But as always, before we hand over to them, let's quickly take a look at some of the news from this week. And although Goran is not today with us, um, I do want to highlight one blog post from Steffen Müller, um, who talks about the R scenarios for Windows application um, using Azure Files SMB, which I think, I mean, Goran could obviously now talk a lot about um, all the details and really drill into um, the, the, the benefits in here um, of this specific blog post. but. Um, Stefan just outlines the steps how you can use Azure Files and, and, and also actually ANF in um, a Windows environment. What you would do to set up a disaster recovery, and um, he, he outlines some of the steps that are required to, to get this working. So I think if you are running your systems on Windows, then um, this uh, blog post is definitely inter of interest for, to you. Um, the next one is a blog post from Harut uh, from SAP. Um, I think we, we talked about um, Harut and, and a different blog posts from him. Obviously, we had um, Martin Pankratz on the show um, a few times when it comes to SAP private link. And in this um, blog post, Harut talks about uh, how the customer Friesland Campina is using private link in their scenarios with Azure storage account. So you remember um, Martin Pankratz had created tons or has created tons of blog posts that outline how you can use private link. Um, so when you run your SAP system on Azure um, with BTP on Azure and the different integration scenarios, how you can use this in, in different setups. And here um, the customer Friesland Campina is using um, private link with their Azure storage accounts. Um, with um, yeah the SAP integration suite, so it's a it's a it's a nice setup, a nice um, scenario. How customers are really using this combination of business technology platform, private link, and their SAP systems on Azure. Good. And the last um, blog post that I want to highlight is um, from Bartosz. Um, so Bartosz continues his story on the CDC connector. Now we are in part three. And in this part three, he's basically talking about how what what needs to be done on the SAP side to get access to the data. So the CDC connector, as we talked about in the past, so we had Ulrich Christ um, on the show a few times, um, is how to use um, the ODP framework on the SAP system. So Bartosz guides us through the steps. Well, actually, also how to use SLT. So um, uh, we we talked about SLT, I think. In the last show or in the, in the in the show before that, but then how how you get the data into the ODP framework basically, and I I guess in part four we'll then see how um, the CDC connector can connect to the ODP framework and actually retrieve the data and make it available, um, yeah via the CDC connector in Synapse or or Azure Data Factory. So with this, that was actually all from from my side for for this week, which. It's actually uh, perfect because we have a little more time than to talk about the SAP and Power Platform Roadshow. And for me, obviously, that was very special because I was also invited and as one of the speakers um, for the for the Roadshow. And it was fantastic to talk about SAP and Power Platform. But obviously, I had the, the huge benefit that I could just, yeah, join the, the event. I, I didn't need to prepare anything. I, I didn't need to organize everything. So... Um, Malene and Mahesh, maybe b before we go into the details of the Power Platform Roadshow, maybe uh, you can quickly introduce yourself and then, yeah, let's let's learn a little more. What did it take to to get this whole thing started and um, to hear more about your experience? Malene, maybe starting with you. 
Yes, thank you. And first of all, thanks for the invitation. So really lucky to be here today in your episode. Um, yes, my name is Marlene. I'm with Microsoft now five years. I'm working in our partner organization, which is called the Global Partner Solutions. And I'm a channel sales manager for Power Platform, meaning everything what comes to our corporate and SMB customers um, where our partners are involved, uh, we're going to support them in order to win new customers and basically support them with all our uh, programs and um, help we have. And yes, I'm working really closely together with Mahesh. So handing over to you. Yeah, thanks. And again, I mean, Holger, it's it's lucky for us as an opportunity to be with a YouTube star. We feel like stars already, right? <laughs> so for me and Marlene, this is a great opportunity. And uh, yeah, I, I'm responsible for uh, Power Platform as a business lead for Germany, meaning I take care of the strategy and operations of how do we bring Power Platform to our customers? How can we help them increase the uh, usage of it? And how basically, what problems can we solve for our customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, fantastic. So so when, when we start from the beginning, um, what, what was or what is the um, um, SAP and Power Platform Roadshow? What, um, how did it come about? How, how did you... Um, come up with the idea of such a roadshow and and yeah, what was it basically? Yeah, so I think the idea was seeded by John, who is not with us unfortunately uh, at the moment, but it was very simple. Is almost all of our customers are using a combination of SAP and Microsoft products, right? They're the yeah. most powerful softwares in any enterprise. However, each business has a unique need and they end up customizing their SAP systems or Microsoft systems, which we all know increases the complexity and the cost to manage all of this. So the question was, hey, Power Platform is about low code, no code. How can mm -hmm. we help our customers using their SAP systems, keeping, as you say, Holger, keeping the core clean, mm -hmm. right? whilst leveraging the know-how of their daily Microsoft usage. So almost all our customers are on Microsoft Teams, on Outlook, on all of our you know, uh, solutions. So it was simply to showcase, firstly, can Power Platform be an extension to the SAP systems and mm -hmm. help meet their business agility and needs? And if at all, the SAP systems can interact with each other bi-directionally, how can it you know, basically reduce the complexity, increase time spent on more valuable or value add things. So we started talk, talking with our partner ecosystem and here again, Marlena is the mastermind behind that. And the response was beyond surprising. So when we pitched this idea to our partners, everyone said yes. So for us, that was like the great starting point to say, okay, we are onto something and which can help our customers. And to that point, while shortlisting partners we reached, more partners than we could have on the roadshow. Yes. But th that's where the complexity started and then we had to get into the planning and execution. But Marlene, you've been involved in all of these cities. <laughs> tell, tell us more about that. Yes, as you said, I think it was a great idea in the beginning and uh, it was a small idea in the beginning, then it became really something big where many people wanted to join, especially uh, our partners, which had the great opportunity to be with us on the roadshow. But if I would like, uh, bring it down to like three highlights I wanted to mention today. And I think this is also interested for all the audience. It was definitely the possibility to have it a face-to-face -face meeting again Absolutely. after all this con um, pandemic, uh, which um, all of us suffered. And uh, it was really awesome to have these three uh, stop roadshow in Munich, in Cologne and in Hamburg. Uh, as Holger said in the beginning, all three stops were basically booked out so we needed to have more chairs than capacity allowed us so in each three cities we really were, were a full room of, of enthusiasts and people who really wanted to know more about power platform and sap which is really great so i think we got told that this was the biggest um on-site event attendance since COVID. so i think we can really say that this was a big success and, and Marlene, this, yeah j just to chip in here because i think that was also really fantastic for me to see um Typically, when you when you have these events, um, not that this is a bad thing, but you also have a lot of partners showing up um, that, that want to learn. But but I yeah. think in this event was was also really cool that you made sure that a majority of attendants were actually customers. Yeah. So so really, um, customers that want to learn about this. And I think um, I I mean when I also talked about this or, or published this on on LinkedIn, 
a few partners also reached out to me and said, look, can I can I participate? And then we, we had to say, well, unfortunately, no, we are um, prioritizing customers um, before mm. partners. So, so that really led to a situation where we had um, a majority of customers in the room, which was yeah. also fantastic to see, actually, from my point of view. Perfect. And as you said, like this was the intention to really invite our customers, telling them more, but also helping our partners on a stage to really showcase what they have in yes, order to yes. support. And in the end, it's always the trio of like a customer, a partner and Microsoft. And I think with this event, we really kicked it off um, as um, as a, a success. Yes, as you said, nine partners were involved, um, mm -hmm. shortlisted because many partners wanted to join. But I'm really happy that we had nine partners with us with a huge practice and huge capabilities in SAP and Power Platform and incredible content and also really nice demos they showed on, on, on the roadshow. And uh, what we wanted to show a case as well today is to see that we not only had partners presenting, but we also had reference customers. So in total, I think we had five uh, during all three cities. So really customers joined us on stage and really showcased what their solution is about. So it was not theoretically, it was really a practical yeah. insight into how the solution of SAP and Power Platform helped the customers in their daily business. And I think this is just awesome. Um, to have these people talking uh, and uh, talking on our behalf how these integration uh, mechanisms could look like. So, yeah, in the end, I think just to name them, we had um, Avato, Almato, All for One Group, InfoPols, Orbis, NTT, MSG, Syntax, and Verovis. So, these were our nine uh, partners joining us on stage. And uh, yeah, we're really happy that they went this journey with us. And I think what what is also fascinating that these partners in a lot of cases came, I mean, some of them have a, already a combined practice of SAP and Microsoft, but yeah. but some of these partners came really with their SAP team and with their Microsoft, Microsoft. team. Yeah. And they, I, I had one discussion, I forgot with which partner that was, but but actually they, they told me that they had never seen their, their SAP counterpart basically or their Microsoft mm -hmm. counterpart. So and we brought them together basically. So So that was also really fun to see that um, this this joint um, topic of Power Platform and SAP that this really also um, pushed some partners to to come together and 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 um, within their company bring the different yeah. teams together. Yeah. So that was also yeah. really cool. They're using they're using the synergies which normally they're a SAP partner and a Microsoft partner yes. and in, working in their own units as you said it. But this time we really came together and they also saw the potential of working together with Microsoft on on these two topics. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely, and I think yeah. one of the examples I can quote here is <clears throat> from a partner who was wanting to be part of the roadshow, but who could not make it to the finals because they didn't have a deep SAP practice, right? However, after the roadshow, what they've at least reached out to me and said is, hey, we are very well versed with the Microsoft practice, but given how much of momentum this generated, now we'll be, you know, stepping into the SAP practice and building that know-how. So in a way, this was more like a marriage for the partners to learn about which practices to bring in so that they can successfully help their customers. And my the, the, the funny thing is, and we need to talk about this offline because I had the complete opposite thing that an SAP partner reached out to me via LinkedIn and said, look, um, I, I heard about the roadshow. We, we are a really good SAP partner, but we don't know enough about the power platform. And I, I shared with them the, um, the uh, Microsoft partner network links and some onboarding guides on, on the power platform. And we had already some some additional discussions there in the process of developing a first custom connector for the Power Platform. So so th that was really really amazing. And now that you're saying you had the same experience basically on the on the Microsoft side, that's yeah. fantastic to see what um, yeah what what you accomplished there um, during this this roadshow to really reach out to these partners that are maybe focusing on only Microsoft or only focusing on SAP and really showing them. The, the art of the possible with these different um, use cases. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we talked about some of these use cases and Marlene, you, you said that in a lot of cases, the partners not only talked about a theoretical case and you potentially you could use Power Platform with SAP, but yeah. um, we really had, or the, the partners had then customers there and um, the, the customers that were really talking about um, their um, implementations, their, their use cases. So, um, I don't know any any um, reference cases that you thought were were really um, yeah top of uh, the, the list basically or that that um, yeah uh, yeah were 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 
I I I don't want to say the 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 best because I think um um they were all really really good one but but yep. maybe you can mention a few that um uh, where you really thought well this this is really cool. Yeah, and I think you you said it already. It's hard to handpick one or two of them because there were so many interesting ones. But and I'll share more about it in a minute. But one example that hit home and hit my heart was the one uh, which was a reference customer driving down from Ukraine over 2,000 kilometers in a car to join us on the roadshow to talk about how they have leveraged power platform in the current circumstances which are happening in their country, right? And the example is more about uh, how they used power platform and the AI capabilities to play. At, maybe I can just share it in a in a slide. Yeah. So this is the company where and the people who drove down from Ukraine, which is MHP. So it's the largest uh, agro industrial group which manufactures grains and produces food in Ukraine and supplies to more than 80 countries worldwide with with more than 25,000 employees, right? And the example they showcased to us is about how they used algorithm to make sure that the grains are placed in a way across the field that they have the maximum produce. So first they analyze the fields and they understand what is the best way that they can optimize for space because they want to have the highest produce, right? Second, they want to make sure that depending on when the produce is ready, they have an optimal plan for purchasing sales and supply of these grains to the right stakeholders. And what they have showcased here is clear example of how technology can help in circumstances like a human crisis in a country to help the front line and secure food, which is probably the most important thing. And secondly, the benefits that they have, you know, uh, witnessed over a period of time. So more than one million saved just by better utilization of AI and technology and things that could normally take two weeks to do in terms of calculations and optimization have been done in hours. And the way they have been able to do this is just reimagining the process of how it was done before and embracing technology we are in a time where, you know, there's a lot of talk about how AI can take over our jobs. But at the same time, here is an example of how a company has been able to embrace this to their advantage. And not only to theirs, an advantage that safeguards the entire country. Yeah. So that was one that really hit home for me. Yeah, that, that was really actually absolutely amazing. And I think um, from from different perspectives, I mean, as, as you said, um, driving 2000 kilometers to, to Cologne, um, just to be part of the roadshow is 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 one thing, but then um, when when she also talked about uh, this this new normal life, basically that um, if there if there is a um, a bomb warning, or I, I actually don't know how to say that, but but if there's a warning that they all need to go down to the cellar and it's it's very normal, they they have set up their operations there, and then when everything is quiet again, then they go up and 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 continue their work there. So I think. Yeah. That was for me something that I that was just uh, incredible. Uh, I mean, I, I never have would have thought that, but um, it's 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 just uh, yeah, uh, crazy amazing what, what what she's doing there or what the whole um, team there is doing. So so that was one thing. But the other thing that I also found really fascinating is this um, fusion teams concept, mm -hmm. basically that she was talking about. That it's it's not only about power platform. It's not only about SAP, but it's really how you can put these different play, play, uh, um, pieces together, how you are using different Azure services, how they're using right. an, a, a data lake to consolidate the data. As you said, how they're using AI um, on, on, on top of these scenarios and then putting all these bits and pieces together. And and yeah, th then you get these, these, these benefits there. And I think um, we didn't mention that, but Marisol was also um, part of the road show, and and we had Marisol um, on 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 our show here a, a few times as well. Um, and I think she she also talked in a she made a fantastic pitch about this power platform. So so really this this platform aspect of um, of the power platform where where you can plug in and reuse these different bits and pieces, and everything is protected on this on this one platform where you have security, where you have governance, where you have um, all these uh, these benefits that a platform can provide you, and that is exactly what um, MHP leveraged from my point of view. That they 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 saw the benefit in this platform, 
they enhance it with different tools. I mean, obviously from SAP, but with different Azure services. And then they came up with these results of, I mean, yeah, one million dollars saved and stuff like that, or or two hours instead of fourteen days. I mean, that 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 is that is impressive, and it is really coming from the customer. So the, these are not some some marketing numbers that Microsoft invented. This is really the results that this customer presented to us, and I thought that was that was just absolutely amazing to see this. Yeah, yes. totally. And I think there was one more very interesting example. Sorry, Marlena. Yes, I just, which was... I just wanted to add on, on one part. Sorry, uh, Holger was saying, because um, I think what was also great on this case, and uh, just to name it, Infopulse is the partner who, who is mm -hmm. behind that customer, who is also an Ukrainian uh, partner. And right. I think one thing I really liked uh, in this like uh, duo of the customer and the partner is that they were really grateful to come to our roadshow, to be present, to have this slot on our stage, and also to showcased what they did um, during the progress and the project with, with the customer. So yeah, I think this gratefulness, I just wanted to underpin again, because I think for both of them, it was a really big chance to be with us on the roadshow. Yeah. Okay. So Mahesh, sorry, over to you again. <laughs> All good. And I think there was another interesting example. Maybe Marlene, you want to share more details about that? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it was Hermann, basically a German uh, manufacturer of doors, uh, door frames and gates. Probably many of you know Hermann because I think in every house, that's at least what Hermann said, and in every office building, there is some some door or, or frame from Hermann. And um, they are basically the fourth biggest uh, door manufacturer worldwide with I think 20 million doors have been produced since they uh, founded the company. So these were impressive numbers when I heard about first about this customer. Um, we were lucky to have two colleagues from Hermann KG um, um, coming and joining us on site. And they're showcased on a um, specific use case, which is called increased efficiency on the construction site with a mobile app. So this is exactly also what we heard also from, a, from the first example, that there is any specific need or pain point at the customer, which is able to solve with a simple, simple power app. And um, maybe Mahesh, if you click one further, I can uh, go a bit through it. Mm. Um, so normally it was like the case that a frontline worker at Hermann uh, took the measurement on the construction side basically manually and waited uh, until they can go back to the to the office to punch all the data into the system and then really triggers any kind of uh, manufacturing process. But as we know, and we saw it also in the results on the first example, how much time and how much possibility of errors can happen if you have yep. a really manual process uh, each day, maybe 10, 20 times, um, how, how complex that could be if we heard about 20 million doors worldwide, right? So now, thanks to the construction side app, which is a, a solution from our partner Orbis, mm -hmm who is standing behind uh, that project, they have really the possibility now to have a directly linked their measurements, uh, um, measurement device to the mobile app, which I just mentioned. And what the cool thing is about, um, obviously construction sites are not always, uh, always uh, directly in the city or sometimes they're in the basement. So this mobile apps also works for offline data, meaning they can basically trigger every data in their system, measuring all the all the uh, objects and then having real time data coming back to the to the manufacturing team or to the project manager who have a clear and direct um, visibility on the status. So this is great. They showcase this and I think it's a really hands on use case with everybody can kind of resonate with even though I'm not a construction site worker, but still I can feel how a construction worker is using this device and then having the possibility of the data coming coming to the app. And this um, screenshot is, I think, a nice one because this is basically the extract of everything a construction worker is measuring and uh, saving into the app and have like a dashboard on each of the phones to see which uh, room, which door has which size, which breadth, uh, which which kind of other um, uh, parameters, and yeah, afterwards mm. it's basically able to to work with that on a more efficient and also time saving saving basis. But these were only two uh, brief examples. As we said, we had five in total, but obviously today we had only chance to to present two. But uh, in general. I would say nach der Rocho is for der Rocho. I think we Germans say kind of that sometimes. So Mahesh, maybe you tell the people what's coming next. Um, yeah, but maybe just quickly before that, Holger, do you have any other questions as a filler? Oh, yes, sorry. Um, no. You also um, heard the Hermann example, true. 
Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. I. For, for me, the um, the one one funny thing about after the the Herman demo basically was, uh, where where I think someone from the audience said, "Well, can, can I have this app?" Um, because for my next IKEA um, yeah. uh, things that I want to I, I want to measure and everything and it, the app looked pretty good, so yeah. I think that that was that was also um, an in interesting scenario and and actually th that's for me um, pretty uh, Im important about these roadshows and these scenarios. It's not about necessarily that customers use these examples one to one, but they are also getting in inspired on on what is actually possible with the Power Platform because I think we have these partners. That are really really good that that um, have built and have invested in in um, a lot of complex um, um, power platform and SAP projects, but um, it is important to highlight. I mean, it is a low code tool, so we also want to encourage obviously customers <coughs> to use these tools and and build their own tools and 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 um, address simple mundane very um, very simple tasks that are repetitive over um, over each day basically. So. Um, th that was for me also one of the um, the, the the biggest takeaways so to to be inspired by these different scenarios then that um, the partners and customers presented, and then see how can I um, leverage that in in my own projects basically. Yeah, and I think that was a very interesting point you mentioned there, Holger, because majority of our customers at the end of the roadshow, at end of each city, we asked like a for a feedback. What did you enjoy the most? And the feedback always was it's the inspiration of the use cases because yeah the challenge with the door measurement might not apply to me as a company correct but the fact that i could use multiple devices bluetooth connections get that process simplified is just triggering a thought on how my processes can be simplified so yeah that's exactly what happened Exactly. That is not about a web app or something like that, but you can integrate in devices, that you can take your data offline, that you can um, use the Power Platform scenarios also somewhere where there is no internet connectivity. So, so I think th these small bits and pieces, that, that's really what, um, what the customers and partners showed, that it is possible. And now it's up to you to, to leverage this, this information, either with a partner, or obviously um, try to do it on your own, um, especially, I mean, I'm also using the Power Platform to, to some extent, and I'm certainly not a Power Platform expert, but it's it's just always amazing to me um, what is possible there, um, how, how easy it is, it is to get started, and then also amazing to see what you can actually do if, if you just give it a try. That That's always fantastic for me to see. Yeah, and I think just to add to that is, as you said, you don't have to be a power platform expert. We're changing the game when it comes to integrating AI with our co-pilot announcements last week. So we showcased how co-pilot within power platform, which is in power virtually, or how simple it can be to build a bot under less than one minute. That was the challenge we showcased and it was proved with automation workflows, which can be simply describing to design your workflows and drawing an app to building an app within seconds. I think this is super cool on what's coming ahead within Power Platform. And yeah, customers are super curious. And actually, one, one last comment, and, and then uh, we, we, we can continue there. But um, I, I really liked also um, in Hamburg, your, your very last demo, basically, because I think you you showed a, a certain website, you, you searched for a certain term, and there was no result. Now you use Power Virtual Agent and, and the latest functionalities to um, which is which is using GPT-4 as, as an underlying um, language, large language model to query this specific website. And then you could interact with this chatbot. You basically ask the very same question that you put before in the in the search box, which is there on the web page, and you got the results that you were looking for. And yeah. I think that was for me, I mean, this this was done or this can be done in five minutes and provides such a huge value add. Because I mean, they could have just replaced now their standard search bar with right. the Power Virtual Agent search bar, basically, and they would have immediately gotten a much, much better experience. And this is something that every customer can do. They can take a look at their website and maybe their search is already perfect, so great, but then they can still offer with a few clicks an additional experience that allows them to, that allows their visitors a, a much more um, natural language-like interaction. Or maybe, like in this specific case, it can even improve the way how um, how you find things 
on your on, on your website. So I think that was I, th that was your, your last session. Um, everyone is a mag, mag, um, mag, ah. magician. Magician, thank you. Yes. Stupid word. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was that was really amazing. I think that was a perfect closing, yeah. actually, for 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 the roadshow. But as as Marlene said, not the roadshow is for the roadshow. So so, what is next? Yeah, it's hard to you know outline all the details. But I'm just going to say customers are going to continue using SAP and Microsoft. We are not competing each other, rather providing options for customers to choose between the best of both worlds, right? And the roadshow proved there is a real need within our customers to embrace low-code solutions. And I think this just amplifies as we get into an economic downturn, the need to optimize processes is only going to become stronger. And organizations will need to think of how to adopt their processes, embrace low-code solutions, but having said that, I think it will be sad if we said this is the end. Marina, is this it or is there more coming? Yes, hearing uh, all the feedback of partners and customers and also this nice conversation we had today here, I think one thing is clear that they all want to see want to see more of SAP and Power Platform. So I guess let's see what's coming in our next fiscal year um, and stay tuned. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So I, I definitely also hope that there will be a follow up, that we will have additional um, scenarios. But I think um, for now, yeah, it was just fantastic. And, and and thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the the roadshow as well. I, I really enjoyed it. I um as I said, I I enjoyed the discussions that I had with customers, um the discussions that I had with partners um on the next steps, what they want to do. So I think also a big thank you from from my side um for having me there. And yeah, as I said, I'm I'm also really looking forward to to the next steps um, in the next fiscal year. Yeah. Nice. Good. Thank um, you. Any other closing words? Otherwise, thank you so much. Um, I, I'll put the links um in in the show notes uh for also for the different partners that participated in the in the roadshow. So um, if you are interested to learn more about um offline power apps or, or other scenarios then you will find the contacts all um from from linkedin in the show notes with this mahesh malene thank you so much for joining us i think that was really really great to to hear from you about the roadshow and yeah i said i'm really looking forward to the next steps um in the next fiscal year thank, thank you, you, for you so much right. looking thank forward you. thank you thank bye you bye-bye <laughs>